So you finished your first website and you're ready to make it look better, to apply some style and design elements to it. We've been talking about CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, and the day is finally here to learn more about it and how you might use it. So the best way to use CSS is to find a style sheet that already exists. And I've created two style sheets that are very simple for you to use and to apply. And so I'm going to apply them to my page, which is similar to the site that you created, except yours has more content on it. So I have a resume section, links page, assignments page, and a home page, very similar to the site that you created. And I want to find those style sheets. Now there are other style sheets that you'll be able to find on the web later, but you have to understand how the style sheet works before you can apply it to your page. So for now, just use one of these style sheets that I have on our course outline under September 15th. If you come over here and do a control click or you do a right click, depending on if you have a, a two button mouse and say save link as and save these style sheets, you can save them both in the same folder where you have your HTML pages. So you can see over here, I have my HTML pages and then I have my two style sheets here that we're going to take a look at. I already have them open in Text Wrangler and I will go through and explain what's in the style sheet. So let's take a look at style two. And this style sheet has the um, several elements set up in it already. The first one being the body element, and we know that from HTML. And in CSS, we take the element and then we open and close curly braces and put the styles inside it. And you'll have a handout that tells you what the styles are that you can apply to different elements. Uh, in this case, we're establishing a top and left margin for the entire body of the document to zero, so it's taking away any default margins. We want the color to be black, the background color to be beige, the co this is the text color here, this is the background color. And we want the font family to be one of these choices, depending on what the user has. And if they don't have one of these fonts, then they'll at least get a sans serif font, which just means that text doesn't have the flourishes in the typography. We'll talk more about that in class. And then uh, the font size default for the body of the document 12px. We'll be able to control that later for different sized elements. Then the next element we have here is A, which is used for our links. We have a number of different things we can set up for our links to establish the color that it is when it's not visited, and then the color that it is when it is visited. And in this case, you can actually control the text decoration, which is the ability to underline or not. So sometimes you don't want those links underlined. Uh, and then it also allows you to establish a hover state for your links, which is something you could not do in regular HTML. And so you'll see that effect when I apply it. When I hover over it, the links will be gray and they will then be underlined, but not before. And then I have styles for my heading level one and heading level two. And if I wanted to, and I probably will later, I can add styles for other level headings myself. I could copy this and paste it down here, change it to H3 and adjust how large and what other elements I want to apply to it. And then I also have a uh, style here for paragraphs. And I'll talk a little bit more about the rest of the style sheet in a second, but let's go ahead and apply the style sheet. So to apply the style sheet, every HTML page needs a link to it in its head. And it's just the link tag. And the key thing that you have to have is the href, which is the link itself to the style sheet. So in this case, I'm gonna use style two. And then you have the type and the relation attributes. Close this the proper way for items that aren't surrounding anything, standalone tags. The main thing that we have to have is the link itself to the style sheet. This just says what type of a style sheet we're using and the relationship of this particular link because the link tag can be used for other things, although it's mostly used for attaching a style sheet. And uh, we just put the name of the, the file here because we don't have it in another folder. So if we save this page and we come over to our browser and we refresh the page that we're working on, we should see some changes. 
So we have some changes. I didn't really change the color of the background, but I could do that in the style sheet. But I have it here where you can see that the font actually changed. And mainly what you can see is when you hover over these links, they change colors and an underline comes up. And that is all from the style sheet. We have a link in here as well. So that was pretty simple. We got a style sheet and we applied it. If we want to apply the other style sheet, just to see what that would look like, the one called just style.css, we can just change that, save, refresh the page, and get a sense for what that looks like. So there were some slightly different styles applied there with the white background. But that's not the only thing that's in the style sheet. We have a lot of other things in our style sheet toward the bottom, these elements that have the pound sign in front of them. And those are our layout elements. And this is what we want to do now is create some boxes, some containers for our content in the HTML page, and then apply the styles to that to control how they look, where they're placed, um, the color, etc. So we're going to establish on this site a header section, a nav section for our navigation, and then a section section for our content. And we can also establish a footer if we want to put some of our content in a footer. And I'll show you how to do that. All the styles are already set up for this. We know that these are for div IDs because of the pound sign in front of this. And so we can go into our page and set up what these sections will look like. So up here, I have the H1, and I had been saying all along that's probably going to be a placeholder for a logo eventually. And those are the things that you would put in the header. So I'm going to say div ID equal header. And I'm going to close that right below the H1 because this is the area that I want to be my header. And then I'm going to just copy and paste this. For the other ones, here's where I want my nav to be. And again, I'm just reading this from the style sheet. I know that there's a nav section created in that style sheet, so I'm just applying it. And I'll close it. And then we will do one for the section which contains the content. So a section div, opening and closing. And then if we want to use a footer, we can even do a div for the footer. And we'll put some content in that. So we'll have a div for the footer, opening and closing. I always like to close anything I open while I'm going. And in here, maybe I'll put a paragraph that includes the date. So I'll have it say September 10th, 2014, and close that paragraph. So I will save this page and refresh it. I want to go back and use the style two to begin with here. We'll, we'll look at both of them. And let's see what this page now looks like. Oh, look, so we have some boxes around our header. Our navigation looks completely different. And we have a section and we even have an area that's a footer here. So we'll probably play around with some of these things to make them look better, maybe center the date in the footer. But you know, we're really starting to have a page that looks like something now. We're able to control the dimensions of the area where the text is flowing, and we have a new layout for our um, navigation. And we also have different ways that these links work for our navigation. So let's take a look in the style sheet to see what's making that happen. So we come down here, we can see all the elements for the header div, which controls the background. This is the gray background and controls the width and the height of it and the border. And this controls the box for the nav. But we also have some special styles that we're using inside the nav to control how the list looks. So this says list style type none that takes away the bullet from the list. And this says display in line that makes it display across instead of up and down. Now this only applies to the ULs and the LIs that are in the nav section. So the other list that we have on the site, this music list here, is not affected by that because it's not in the nav section. You can also see here that there are special styles for the links inside the nav section, and that controls now the color, the visited, and the hover option, which is completely different than the A's we have for the rest of the site. So that's why when we're on the page, these links look one way, 
but the links in the text still look the default way. Then we have section here that controls most of our content on the page and our footer. So it's that simple to set it up. Again, let's go back here and let's just apply the other style sheet because that has the same sections in it, the same divs, and take a look and see how that changes. Ah, a completely different site. We've got some problems here that we'd want to address in terms of the amount of content that we have, but we have a left-handed layout here for our navigation. Our bullets are gone, we have different colors, and we have a different uh, area for our head. So this is something that we want to play with. We'd want to adjust some things and push things down, um, but we have a completely different layout for this particular page now, just based on applying a completely different style sheet. So let's go back to style sheet two. Now what's happening with our other pages? Let me refresh this back with style sheet two. On our other pages, if we click on resume page, oh, that looks the same. We haven't made any changes to that. And same thing with the other two pages. The style sheet has not been applied on those pages. So what we would need to do is go into each page, attach the style sheet, so I could grab the code that I have here and attach it. But that's not the only thing that you have to do. You have to actually go ahead and set up your divs again for this uh, particular page, for every page. Now the easier thing to do would be to just go into your index page when it's set up and then modify the content, save it with a new name. That would be the easiest thing to do. Make sure you get all your divs set up on one page before you create your other pages. So it's up to you if you want to take that route or if you want to modify each one of these pages individually. And again, we would do that just by taking the same elements that we had on the other page and do it on all four pages. So here we're gonna have our header div opening and closing. our nav, and again, I'm just copying and pasting so it saves time. Always closing it properly. Our section for most of our content, and then our footer, which we don't have any content in our footer yet, but I, I could always add that. So I'll save the resume page, and now when we click on resume, the resume page has the same layout. And we want to do the same thing to the links page and the assignments page because those style sheets have not been applied yet. One other thing that I'd like to show you is how to add a special class. We've done IDs with the pound sign, but special classes are things that you can use over and over again, not just once like you can with an ID. And to do that, we'll do it at the bottom of the style sheet here, so I'll add. And maybe I want here on my layout, let's go back to the home page. I think my picture is a little bit too close to the text here on the right. I've got some padding that automatically comes with the paragraph here, but I'd like to put a little space, a little padding there on the right between my picture and the text. And maybe I want to be able to have padding on the right of a lot of things, but maybe not on everything. Maybe I want it to be on some images and not others. So the way I can do that is I can establish it as a special class and I can make that special class attached with a certain element or a special class on its own. So if I want to attach it to a certain element, I would say IMG because I want it to go only on images and then I use the dot and the dot is what tells me it's a special class and I'm just going to call it pad right. And so we're establishing that I'm calling it anything I want to call it. If I wanted to be able to put padding on any particular element, I would just have it say dot pad right. I think I'll do that because I might want padding right on other things. I might want it on a table or I might want it on other uh, elements, maybe a certain paragraph. And so I'm just going to say padding right 10 px. And so I have the special class now. Let me save the style sheet and then I just need to use it. So I'm going to come here and where I have my image and I'm going to apply class equal pad right. So I'm just referencing the name that I gave it. So you can see that you can establish any names of classes or IDs that you want, which gives you a ton of flexibility so that you can create any styles that you need. Let's see if this worked. And you can see that it applied 
10 px of padding to that image. So that's it. That's how you apply a style sheet. If you want to make modifications to the style sheet, and you should, you can, you can come here and you can change the color. So we have this background color beige. Let's make the background color blue and see what happens to our site. Let's go to the page that has the style sheet on it. And suddenly we have a blue background instead of a beige background. If we want it to be yellow, we can do that and see what that looks like. And you can pick the colors from the color, the HTML color codes to get exactly the right shade of what you're looking for. If you want to change the color or the layout of the navigation, you would do that here in the nav section where you would say, change the color of the background. Maybe we want it to be green now. And we can change the layout of these items by changing the padding that we have within each item. So there's a lot of control that you can have for these style sheets. It's green now. And this would also apply to all the pages that are attached to it. So you can see automatically the resume page is updated with these new styles. Once you have the page set up, then it's very easy to make changes that cascade throughout your entire site. That's the name cascading style sheets. We'll be talking about this a lot more in class and talking about ways that you can customize the page and the CSS to be the design that you want it to be.